Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back for another video. Uh, we got Earl Monroe versus Gail Goodrich. Who was greater? Um, I don't know a whole lot about Gail Goodrich, but Earl Monroe, I know he's a pretty, pretty good NBA player back in the day. Um, in the Hall of Fame. I, I want to say Gail was in the Hall of Fame, too, but I'm not sure. Um, I don't even know where he ranked it at the top 75 or top 100 NBA players of all time. But... Uh, he should he probably he probably a good player, but he's gonna be compared to like not compared but versus Earl Monroe. So uh, I don't know. Um, I know it probably sound a little different because the room is bigger where I'm at now, where I moved to, and my sound is been acting up. So we're gonna get right into the video. Um, uh, let's get it. Subscribe if you're new, please. Hit my channel, grow some, and hit the like button, all the good stuff, and comment down below anything you want me to watch or. You want to just chit chat and do that too, so let's get right to the video. Welcome to my series of basketball videos where I'll be comparing various NBA greats against each other. I'm doing this because I find that a lot of the basketball hey, videos Johnson. comparing players on YouTube are too focused on the big names Bird. and sometimes compare players from different positions. Parish. For example, Duncan. lots of people compare Jordan to LeBron and Kobe to Duncan just because of their similar levels hey. of achievements, but since those players play different positions and have different styles hey. of play, it's not an interesting comparison. In this series, Dr. I want to do a comparison not between just more well-known players, but players what from days past, the in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, and even the ABA as well, that most Jones modern Nerf. fans probably do not have too much knowledge about. Great also, player. as much as possible, I want to compare players that play similar positions and have similar play styles. To me, Who's that's more interesting than a fruitful comparison. Hey. I'll be using hey. six different metrics to compare hey. each player. The first category is scoring. This category will be defined by each player's career points per game, Peak points per game, both in the regular season and playoffs, and number of scoring titles. Rebounding. This category will be defined by each player's career rebounds per game, peak rebounds per game, both in the regular season and playoffs, <laughs> and number of rebounding shit. titles. Passing. This category will be defined by each player's career assists per game, oh. peak assists per game, both regular season and playoffs, and number of assist titles. Efficiency and advanced metrics. This category will be defined by each player's career true shooting percentage per okay and win shares per 48, both in the regular season and playoffs. The reason Ooh. I use true shooting percentage is because it's more fair to guards. Field goal percentage tends to be biased to big men because of their height and play style closer to the basket. I also put in win shares per 48 here because it encompasses efficiency along with other attributes to give you an idea of how many wins a player contributes to his team. Defense. This category will be defined by each player's all defensive selections, defensive win shares, and defensive player of the year awards. The reason I'm not using blocks and steals in this comparison is because I want to compare the achievements of older players that modern fans might not have too much knowledge about, and players in the 1960s and early 1970s do not have steals and blocks tracked. Awards. This category oh. will be defined by all-star appearances, all-NBA selections, MVPs, finals MVPs, and championships as the first, second, or third best player. The reason I have to only count championships as a top three player on the team is because otherwise you get into the situation where, for example, Robert Ory has seven rings and Karl Malone has zero. It's not representative of how much better a player is if they weren't a top three player on their team contributing yeah. to a championship. I know including all-star selections is a little bit controversial because it's fan voted, but ultimately this is what the Hall of Fame uses in their criteria to induct a player, as unfair as it sounds. Also, I'll be including ABA stats hey. and awards and using them as equivalent to their respective NBA stats and awards. The only one that's different about the ABA is that instead of Finals MVP, they have Playoffs MVP, which honestly is a better idea than Finals MVP since it accounts for the whole playoffs, but just to keep it simple, I'll be referring to the ABA MVP as Finals MVP here. Also, no All-NBA Third Team selections are counted, because All-NBA Third Teams weren't added until the late 80s, which is unfair to older players. Damn. Also, I'm not using any career total stats because that's a longevity thing. For example, no one would say that Karl Malone was a better scorer than Michael Jordan. Even though he has okay, so when is he going to get it to the and actual... Of course, this is only going to be my opinion from comparing the available metrics. Comparing since I've not watched most of these players live, or even been born when some of these players have been playing. And to keep it fair, I'm judging them based on how they did in their own era. No time travel or what if hey. this NBA player played in today's era or the 1960s, hey, huh? none of that. I'll be strictly basing their stats and accomplishments within their own era against that era's competition, which makes the most sense to me. So I hope you guys enjoy this comparison video and hopefully learn something new from it. All right, let's get it. Earl Monroe and Gil series looks at two offensive guards who both made their mark as part of different dynasties in the early 1970s. Earl Monroe was a playground legend, oh. a dynamic oh. scorer and playmaker that earned the nickname oh. Earl and Black Jesus for his showmanship and ball handling. He started off as the primary scorer for the Washington Bullets team that went to the NBA Finals, 
before becoming part of one of the greatest what? backcourt duos in NBA history, along with Walt Frazier of the New York Knicks. I had no the Earl Monroe had all that. Gail Goodrick followed a similar path, being the primary offensive playmaker for the Phoenix Suns, before becoming part of an all-time great backcourt pairing with Jerry West, as part of a legendary cool. LA Lakers Man. team that won 33 games in you a play row. with Wilt? Which player had the greater career, though? Let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. First category, scoring. In the scoring category, it's very close, as both players had a substantial prime where they averaged 20 to 25 points a game and then quickly trailed off in their later seasons. Monroe averaged 18.8 .8 points per game for his career, peaking at 25.8 per game in 1969, Damn. and 17.9 points per game in the playoffs, peaking Monroe at 28 points per game in 1969. Goodrick averaged 18.6 points per game for his career, peaking at 25.9 per game in 1972, and 18.1 points per game in the playoffs, peaking at 25.4 per game in 1971. Mm, that's still good, players though. with dynamic mid-range scorers, and their averages and peaks are both so similar, it's hard to say that one was better than the other. Yeah. So I have to call this category. Yeah, I call the tattoo. Yeah. Monroe we'll probably get this one. In the rebounding category, it's much the same story, as both players had such similar averages. Monroe oh. averaged three rebounds per game, peaking at 5.7 yeah, a game about in the same. Probably a tie on it too. Three rebounds per game in the playoffs, peaking at 5.3 a game in 1969. Goodrick averaged 3.2 rebounds per game, peaking at 5.4 a game in 1969. I would thought Monroe would have had more than at least about four or five. As with the scoring, both the averages and peaks are average. so similar for both players. It's hard to give one the advantage, so I'll also have to call this category yeah, high as a result. Yeah, i say that too. In the passing category, we finally have one where it's not as close. Monroe averaged 3.9 assists. Yeah, I had a feeling it's good probably get this. Like he more of a passing guard. And 3.2 assists per game in the playoffs, peaking at 4.1 a game in 1971. Goodrick averaged 4.7 assists per game, peaking at 7.5 a game in 1970, and 4.2 assists per game in the playoffs, peaking at 7.6 a game in 1971. Both players were combo guards who could play either point guard or shooting guard positions, hmm. and Monroe could definitely handle the ball quite well. Yeah, he could. I've seen the first bit of the uh, clip. The two, therefore, giving him the advantage in this category. Yeah, he get that. He get the nod a little bit. Yeah. In the efficiency and advanced metrics category, it's pretty close, as both players have almost the same true shooting percentage. Yeah, they almost curve, like the same. With Monroe is slightly ahead in which shares across the board. Game. However, I don't think it's enough to definitively say that he's better, so I'll have to call this category yeah. a tie. They almost like the same player. In this category, neither player was well known for their defense, and no all defensive selections for either player are evidence of this. Monroe got this one. In this category, it's very close, but given the fact that Monroe played fewer games than Goodrick while also piling up a few more defensive win shares, I'll give the ever so slight advantage to Monroe. In the awards category, it's very close. Oh, Both man. players have exactly one All NBA First Team selection, one championship as a top three player, and three finals appearances. What makes this comparison really interesting is that two of those three finals appearances and the one championship each player had was against each other. In 1972, the oh, Lakers wow. with Goodrick beat the Knicks with Monroe. In the following season, in 1973, the Knicks with Monroe got their revenge against the Lakers and Goodrick. Mm -hmm. Goodrick has one more all-star appearance, but other than that, their resumes almost mirror each other's. Yeah. It's just too close to call, and this category yeah. is also call a tie. tie. <laughs> so when all the categories are summed up, Gail Goodrick wins the passing category while Monroe wins the defense category by a small margin, with the other categories being a tie. Yet another very close comparison between two all-time combo guards. If I had to pick, I would probably go with Monroe as his prime. I would too. I like his style a bit. It's also relevant to consider that most people I talk to who have watched both of these players play say that Monroe was near unguardable in his prime, and the NBA themselves picked Monroe for the 50th anniversary. I would, I would believe it. Goodrick off of it. So what do I know? <laughs> Earl Monroe is rightfully remembered as a dynamic scorer and showman who teamed up with both West Sells Bullets and the Walt Frazier Willis Street Knicks to help them win a championship. While Gail Goodrick, while not as flashy as the Pearl, contributed nah. by being the leading scorer of the 1972 Lakers, one of the most dominant teams Ooh, in the history, hand. which culminated in Jerry West's goal of finally leading his team to a championship. While they were not the um, best players on their championship teams, both players should be given more respect as two of the greatest players in NBA. Broke the toe out. Broke a few years, years, years ago, it still bothered me. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next comparison video. Alright.
That's a pretty good video, man. That's a good, com I ain't gonna say comparison, but you know, uh, they're pretty much like the same player, man. That's crazy. Um, I kind of like Monroe better because his style of play. I like a little flashy, this a little flashy, this a little bit. Uh, Gail, I like his game too, but he wasn't as flashy as uh, Monroe, but he still could score, pass a little bit. Uh, both, neither one had great defense or whatever. They still, well, they, they was all right. Um, but let me know what y'all think. I know most of you uh, guys that uh, are older than me, y'all probably seen these guys before in action, uh, whether it was on TV or y'all yeah, was at the game. Uh, let me know, let me know y'all y'all comments about this and um, y'all opinions and um, yeah, Chris Webber versus Spencer Haywood. That's a I don't know. I might watch that next. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button. All the good stuff. And uh, I'm out. Peace.